Hello, it's been a while, but uh, things have still been going forward here on our house project. We are going to take you through one final big tour of the house in its current state before the drywall um, contractor shows up and they're going to be here either tomorrow or the next day. So this will be the last opportunity to see any of the, the guts of the house or at least what's still visible um, after we've had insulation put in. And, I put some other insulation and things in, so I apologize for not taking you through all the mechanical, um, all the plumbing and electrical stuff, but um, you know, I feel comfortable enough with my knowledge of that to do my own, but I don't feel comfortable enough sharing that for somebody else to maybe take and try to do theirs in the event that somebody would be hurt or anything like that. So, that being said, let's kind of go through things here. Um, you'll see the footprint of the house is, is the same that it's been the whole time. I'll just take you through some things. You'll notice that all the wall cavities and then what would be where the rim joists would be if we had a conventionally framed house um, have all been sprayed with a solid three inches of uh, expandable foam. Um, we had that done by a contractor in the area uh, called Midwest Spray Foam and if any of you are in the area um, of Northwest Iowa where we live and you're thinking about having anything done I would strongly encourage you to contact Bob at Midwest Spray Foam because he and his crew do a, a wonderful job. They're very nice to work with and uh, very professional. So thank you to them. Um, but anyway, uh, since we last looked through this, um, I'm trying to think of the last time. I don't know when the last time was you and I all went through this. It's been a long time. But um, anyway, needless to say, we've done all of the rough in electrical. So all of our boxes are located throughout the house. Um, all of our light fixture um, boxes are, are located. You'll notice that here, in what will be the living room, um, we've got actually no overhead lights in this. We're going for a sort of more classic look. And uh, back in the days of gas lamps, those types of things that would have been much more common for people to have lights to hung on the wall as opposed to overhead fixtures because all of those things were plumbed with uh, hard pipe. So it was kind of difficult to have a, you would have had a rigid pipe sticking down from your ceiling and then a fixture off of it. So that wasn't a very common thing. They hid all the pipes in the walls and then they protruded out and were plumbed in. Um, so that being said, uh, I'll give you kind of a layout here of how this is going to be. So we've got the front door right here, and we'll have a series of switches. Um, we'll have a living room switch, which will be these lights. We will have a kitchen switch. We'll have a porch entryway lights switch, and then we'll have an exterior house lights switch, which will all be right here. So you'll be able to walk here without going out into the porch or outside. Uh, to, to either turn on entry lights for people or turn on exterior lights for people as well as turn on the lights in the living room and turn on our, <laughs> our lonesome overhead light there in the kitchen. Uh, we'll walk around here. Um, this will be kind of a blind corner. The door will open into this corner, but we'll have something here, maybe like a coat rack or something on the wall. Um, we'll get some you know, standard outlets. A couple of wall sconces here before the window. Uh, outlet in the corner, another outlet just past the corner, another wall sconce, and yet one more sconce, kind of where I consider sort of the end of the, the living room space to be exterior outlet. Here in the dining room, we'll have two switches. There are two exterior um, house light fixtures, um, one right about here on the outside and one that mirrors on the other side of this door, the French door, so there'll be an exterior light switch and an overhead light switch which will control this fixture that will hang over the dining room table. Uh, a couple more outlets here in the dining room area. And then here in the dining room, we'll also have a, a three-way switch, which will turn on that uh, overhead light along with the one over there in conjunction. And then another one here, which will be a four-way switch, which will work to power the lights in the living room area. So we'll be able to turn on the lights from the living room at the front door here, and there's also another switch at the stairway, which we'll talk about when we get there. Um, some, some code things here. Uh, you notice we have a box up here. Uh, by code, we're required to have a smoke alarm um, on every floor, a hardwired smoke alarm, because this is considered new construction. So we have a box here, one up at the stairwell, and then one down in the basement. Um, they're all tied together by a 14-3 wire, and there's a common wire so that if one goes off, all three smoke alarms go off, which, you know, um, first of all, I, I think it's a great idea because for, I hate the sound of beeping smoke alarms, 
And secondly, it's nice that they're all interconnected so that they communicate. If, if there were to be something in the basement and the smoke wasn't immediately available for us to notice upstairs or we were sleeping or something like that, the interconnect wire will turn on smoke alarm upstairs if it breaks the middle of the night or anything like that. So really a good thing. Some of the some code things I think are a little bit of a pain, but that I think is one that is really well worth the trouble. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the air return here in a minute. Um, out here in the mudroom kind of entryway, um, you'll notice that we got a couple of high mounted um, outlets. This will, um, I'm going to have some kind of a counter here. I haven't decided quite yet what that will be, but we'll have a little workstation. Since the washer and dryer are going to be over there, it'd be nice to have some place to lay out clothes and fold and do that kind of stuff. And we'll have some upper cabinets. Um, we have three cans. Uh, right now, one of them doesn't even have a bulb in it. So you get some sense. I mean, without any drywall or anything, it's a pretty bright space, which is nice. Um, it's nice to be able to see things. Uh, we have a uh, utility outlet here. Um, we're going to have a set of switches. There will be a three-way switch, which will turn on these cans in conjunction with one that's in the kitchen. Uh, there's a switch for this closet, which will have doors, and there will be a fixture that's mounted on the back side of this wall, so it won't actually be direct light, which would be nice, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to put an LED strip fixture in there, which would be, it looks somewhat like a fluorescent fixture. It won't be fluorescent, but it'll put out a lot of light, and that'll keep it from bearing straight down on the washer and dryer. And then a third switch for the exterior light, which is going to hang. You can't see it through there, but there's a, a can that's mounted out in the portico up in the ceiling, and that'll be cut out, and we'll put a little, um, some kind of, maybe just a little <laughs> dangling light bulb or something, something really creative like that. Um, I was talking earlier about the rim joist. This is a better example. The rim joist is that area right in there, the rim bay. Um, between the floor joists and then the outer um, piece of framing that, that runs perpendicular to all these, which is the actual room itself. Um, our insulation contractor did a great job. They got all those crannies and nooks and all the hard to get spots. Um, it's a very, very well sealed house. Um, anyway, if you come in this closet, you'll see we've got uh, hookups here for provisions for a lot of different things. We've got a 220 run here for the uh, electric dryer, and then there's the out, um, exhaust port there. We've got our hot and cold water supply and drain line roughed in here for a washing machine as well as a utility outlet. And if we ever needed to, we're gonna have, we have natural gas. It'd be really easy to add um, through the floor a fixture if we were to decide to go to a gas um, water heater, or no, I'm sorry, a gas uh, dryer. Um, in this closet, I just left this lovely note because I forgot to tell our insulation guy or our drywall guy about this. But if you look up in the closet, you can see it's a little bit of pretty creative uh, plumbing here. Let me see that. Oh, take him up there. So, um, right up in this one uh, stud bay or joist bay, I should say, um, I've got a, a soil pipe there for a, a stool upstairs, which is down that way, which would be to the east. And then there, what you see there is the trap for the shower on the upstairs. Um, and then we got kind of a tight squeeze here. I actually had to run this drain line down through this wall, and it was quite a process. Um, which, if you look on this side, you'll see that I've got these pieces of one by furring right here um, on the face. That's actually not the wall you're looking at. If you look at it from this side, you'll see it's on on the face, but. That and that three quarter inch plywood that I added are just a little piece of mind. I had to cut a lot of that wall out to get that main stack in there. So I wanted to replace it with something so I could feel good about it being strong. Uh, we have a little outlet there in the corner. So if we ever wanted to put a little silly table or something right in this area, we could have a light on it or some other foolish thing like that. Um, we come in here into the bathroom. We've got um, just a simple two two gang box, there'll be two light switches, um, one here which will control the vanity light, and then one here which will control the two cans that are on right now which are remarkably bright, and those are just 60 watt bulbs. Um, but um, this one will be kind of over there where the stool is, which will be down here, and then you'll see I got the rough in there for the stool and rough in for the uh, sink, hot and cold water and drain. Um, unfortunately, because I insulated this for sound, you can't see any of the, the piping, but there's kind of an elaborate vent 
that comes up here and ties in and goes upstairs, but uh, maybe we can show you that in the basement. Um, here in the bathroom, shower, um, nothing too too crazy. Um, just the fixture and the stool there and a vent for it, and then this vent here that covers the uh, washing machine. So this fixture will actually be in the shower or above the shower when it's all said and done. And then we have this um, two of these Panasonic uh, Whisper Green um, continuous duty vent fans, which are supposed to be really nice. They're super high efficiency, super quiet, um, and then they run continuously. So they actually are constantly pulling air out and exhausting it to the outside, which draws in fresh air through whatever little nooks and crannies are left that are open <laughs> in the house when we're all said and done. But um, these actually have a motion sensing module which will go in them when we put the face plate on it so that when a person walks in here, by the time you get about to here in the room, the fan will actually turn on, well it'll already be running, but it'll boost up to um, a higher CFM and then run automatically for 20 minutes and then shut itself back down to the low operating rate. So there's actually no need to have a switch to turn it on and off. And it ensures that every person that comes in here will always have the fan on. So that's kind of nice. Um, if we come in here into the kitchen, um, another two gang box. So as I said, there would be a three-way switch in conjunction with that, which will turn on these entry or the uh, mudroom lights. And a second switch here, three-way switch from the front door for this beautiful singular overhead fixture that we'll have. Um, this wall here will have the refrigerator. Another code thing: the refrigerator is required to have a dedicated circuit. So this is a what we call home run, straight to this one box, and that's it. Nothing else is on there. And that's done so that if if you had some other usage, um, if there's another outlet or something like that, and you didn't know that they were tied together, you know things do trip. And obviously, if you were to to trip a breaker and not realize your refrigerator was turned off, that could be a problem.